Thanks, okay. Taylor, if you can do the roll call. All right, so calling to order at 9.03. Mm -hmm. All right. Juliet Ballard. Marga Larson. I'm present. I'm um, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present calling from Ann Arbor. Margie Reynolds. Elizabeth Thompson. Present participating from Ypsilanti Township. Jennifer Green. Present participating from the city of Ypsilanti. Phyllis Herzig. Bruce Estreen. Oh, <laughs> I'm present and um, representing uh, Ann Arbor. And then, did I pronounce your last name correctly? Astrin. Astrin, thank you. Jennifer and Bruce, We actually say where we're calling in from. So if I was in Florida, I would say I'm calling in from oh, whatever. Okay, state. I am temporarily in Dexter. Oh, nice. Jennifer Hackendorn. President, calling in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Brenda McKinney. Um, here, um, calling from Superior Township. Jasmine Cooper. Present, calling from Pittsfield Charter Township. Allison Foreman. Annie Somerville. We have mm -hmm. one. Wonderful. The next item on our agenda was swearing in of the new commissioners, but actually um, Bruce and Allison were both given the electronic uh, form to fill out for the swearing in process and so we can move past that and go right to public participation um it's any members quite, of the it's quite fun to try to sign your name on those devices if you've ever had to do it but you're Gosh, supposed to be I just making it. sure it, i felt like i was in kindergarten trying to sign my name <laughs> awesome um, Margie is joining us. Um, we'll get where she's calling in from after public participation. Stephanie, you're the only attendee. Uh, feel free to raise your hand if there's anything you would like to share. Great. Um, Margie just joined us. So Margie, where are you com calling in from? We'll give her a moment. Juliet was also in the attendees. I just promoted her. I do want to um, remind the commissioners, the email reminders I send out have your panelist invite. If you guys use the link on the agenda, that's for public. So this is why uh, there might be some issues logging in sometimes. Hi, uh, I'm Margie Reynolds calling in from Pittsfield Township. Juliet. Juliet Ballard calling in from Dexter, Michigan. Thank you. Um, we just closed public participation. There weren't any comments, so we can scoot past the commission response to public participation. Next up is approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion? Move the minutes. A second? A second. Um, and then we open it up for discussion. Any discussion on the minutes? Juliet, I saw your hand up for a hot second. Is there anything? That was just to approve the minutes, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, great, so closing discussion. Um, Taylor, if you could do the vote, please. Juliet Ballards. Approved. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Reggie Reynolds. Approve. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. I approve. Phyllis Herzig. Bruce Street. Oh, I mean, uh, I'm uh, sorry. I, approve. I couldn't hear quite well on that. 
Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Allison Foreman. Annie Somerville. Motion passes. Great. Moving right along. As we get into discussion, I just want to share with everyone that I have to leave um, no later than 10 o'clock. And so I'm as we do discussion and updates, if we could keep them brief, that would be great. We could all be done at 10. Um, if I have to leave before the meeting is done, then Brenda can step in and, and wrap things up for us. Um, discussion items. The first one we have on here is the potential senior millage. We got an update from um, Commissioner Hodge that the while we still need to be moving this forward, um, it's not quite as urgent as what he first thought it was. He got some information from, um, I don't remember who it was information from, but clerk, someone official, he got information from that we are still able to do millage votes every two years, where initially he thought with the changes coming to how we do voting in Washita that it would be every four years. Um, so that does you know, give us a little bit more breathing room. Um, with that said, it's still really important at this time that we as a commission make a, um, a public decision on where we stand on the senior millage. Um, I do have a um, a draft of a resolution that we could discuss and pass up to the Board of Commissioners. I'm, I'm open to any tweaks that we have as a group. I want to share a couple of the key points and then I want to open it up for discussion um, and then we can do the vote after that. Um, I see a couple hands up. I am going to talk through a couple of points and then Deanna, I see you first and then Bruce or Dina, I'm sorry, I work with somebody else, Deanna, who spells her name the same way. And I keep finding myself doing that. So Dina and then Bruce, after I go through the points that um, in discussion with, with people at the county, we feel is, is critical to pass up at this point in time. So the first piece in this um, proposed resolution would be to recommend from us as a as the commission on aging that the county create an office on aging or an office on longevity um, this role would be to provide distribution of public funds including earmarked county funds general funds millage dollars should they come down the pipeline so distribution of millage dollars in identified priority areas, convening key stakeholders and community members to gain insights on efforts to address existing needs or new emerging needs, providing information and referral services to county programs and services that benefit older adults. So the first piece is to recommend that office on aging. The second piece is the COA recommending a senior millage to support not only that office of aging, but also the critical services needed in the county. Um, I know when we talked about this in the potential millage subcommittee, we had a lot of bullet points and it was recommended that at this time, we still keep this a little bit more broad. So we have housing, transportation, complex care management and health and wellness initiatives. Um, I have all this on a document that I can screen share in a moment. Um, I would love to hear some discussion on this. Um, Dina, your hand was first. I just wanted to get a few details that maybe I missed in another meeting, but where does it stand in terms of the um, getting the millage on the ballot like is has it been officially not this year it's not going to happen um is it still possible it could be this year and if i guess based on that question and your what you said earlier like 
if it's not this year, when is the next opportunity? Um, I don't have all of the details on that timeline, except that Commissioner Hodge was working on a proposal for it using the veteran village, and that some of that information is going to the Board of Commissioners on Wednesday. Um, another reason why it's still important that we have some sort of decision as a group on our support of this. Um, so that's as much information I have on the timeline at this point in time. Okay. Um, Bruce? Well, I had a similar question to Dina, so you've, you've partially answered it, but um, I'm I'm also just struck by the fact I, I went back and been just trying to understand the progress or lack of progress, and I'll make this quick, um, but the original blueprint for aging is almost 25 years ago, and mm -hmm. we've done a lot. You know, we've done a fair amount over that time, and we're still working on a number of things, but we are far away from what we need to be doing. And I don't understand at times the, you know, resistance to working on more aggressively on not just the office for aging, which I think is critical, but really, and I and I understand the uh, Annabry Community Foundation report is supposed to come out soon, but there were just two reports out of Washington yesterday that um, I think were of great relevance. One was the need for strategic planning that came out of one of the Senate committees. And the other one was that 50% of older people are not going to be prepared for long-term care and retirement. And it just seems like we continue to kick this down the road. And I don't know when it's going to get to be more urgent. And I don't know what we can do. I'll stop with this, but I don't know what we can do to stress the urgency because it's been a long time and we've just not gone far enough, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I know a lot of people share your frustration um, on how long that's been taking. Um, we've been, you know, most recently trying to build momentum. First, uh, Jason Maciejewski and some other commissioners got this Commission on Aging to be a thing. Um, I know a bunch of us have been talking to our commissioners as much as we can about moving this stuff forward. And, and now they're finally, Commissioner Hodge has some, some proposal language that hopefully is going to be moving forward. So I think we're in this good spot of momentum and my encouragement would be to keep moving it forward, um, to listen to reasons why people were not wanting to do it before. Right. But I think the important piece right now is just to, to keep moving it forward. Um, thank you, Bruce. Elizabeth. I think it is key that we show the Board of Commissioners that we support a millage. No. Obviously, uh, Commissioner Hodge has also told me, because he is my commissioner, that it is on the agenda for Wednesday to discuss this um, millage along with the five other millages that have deadlines for reapproval. Uh, and he doesn't know, he said, how the commissioners will uh, react to each millage proposal, the five renewals and this new one. But he said it's important to have them specifically react to it. And then he is committed to keep pushing for that. Some people asked about the timeline and Justin told me that um, every, it looks like the county can afford having a countywide election every two years because the state, the representatives, excuse me, congressional representatives are elected every two years. So there will be a county election, a countywide election every two years. So, but I think it's important for us to get um, our position in right away. And also, um, I think we need to not get bound up in discussion about what particular services might be funded 
Ura millage to be passed, because that's a long way down the road to get to specifics of how this is going to be administered. I think a, a resolution that pulls not from everything we've ever thought about, but from specific issues we've mentioned in our commission's last three annual report slash updates make a lot of sense because we've had housing accessibility and repairs issued, issues highlighted, transportation issues highlighted, um, and um, care management issues highlighted. And I think if we just use those as an example of some of the things we've heard, that isn't being pre prescriptive saying, um, these are the only things that could be funded instead more of a suggestion. These are the kinds of things that might be funded. Mm -hmm. But I think I, and I'm repeating myself, and I think it's important that we get a specific statement of support in front of the commissioners before they begin to consider, actually consider the issue on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Marta? Um, yeah, I, I'm not clear that the county commission needs to make a decision unless they're trying to get this millage on the ballot for this calendar year. Do you know if they're trying to do that, Marie? Um, I don't know their timeline, no. Um, okay. Um, I'm one of the people that's been reluctant to go forward with the idea of um, supporting a millage because we've been unable to get the county to account for services that they're already providing in a way that we can actually grasp the information. I'm concerned we that have, sorry, keep I'm going. concerned that other millages that have been um, passed in the county appear to have been um, used for items that I would not think would be covered by the terms of the millage. And I'm concerned that there isn't enough clarity as to what the county would actually do with these funds in a way that would be accountable to the public and can be measured. And those are the things that are holding me back from being supportive <coughs> of the idea. If the county is considering putting a millage on the ballot in 2026, there's no need to rush. We can explore more of some of these issues. We've been given some information from the county, but I have not seen what I'm looking for. If we're looking for, um, for example, just um, housing uh, repairs, uh, I have not seen any data from the county about how many seniors are already taking part in the housing repair programs that the county is offering. So I don't know how many more seniors are out there. Um, you know, is, you know, there, there's just too many questions left in my mind for me to be supportive mm -hmm. of the millage at this time. That's what yeah. I have to offer. Thank you. Um, a little bit of devil's advocate. One of the, the reasons the county, and I'm sure there's lots of reasons, but one reason it appears the county hasn't been able to provide that level of, of detail on the programs that they currently offer is because they're either not tracking it in some of the programs um, or there's just not capacity to drill down into that information where an office on aging, which is part of this recommendation that I'm bringing um, forward today, that the office on aging be part of that and hold the county accountable to actually spending those funds on older adults, um, working with other departments like the home repair department um, on helping older adults too. Um, we just don't have that kind of representation in the county at this time. And I would be more uh, supportive of the millage question if the county would create the Office on Aging and have that office come up with these details that we're looking for as part of the progression towards deciding about putting a millage on the ballot, that I would be supportive of. Gotcha, thank you. Margie and then Phyllis. 
I was wondering if you could share the, you mentioned two documents, I think two that a report came out nationally, is that true, Bruce? Yes, two two came out just yesterday and the day and, before from the from the Senate. And I'm wondering if um you could give us um a link to that or how to about it. I'd like to, to see what was said. Yeah, Bruce, if you could share those with me and or Taylor and we'll get them out to the full group. Okay. Sure. And then I wanted to ask uh Dina if um your group um, is in support of the marriage. Um, have you have you talked about that? What what would be your stance on that? Uh, we I think we haven't had a formal conversation as a as a whole, but um, knowing the representatives on the collaborative, I think I can adequately say that there would be overwhelming support for the millage. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, those are the agencies that are serving older adults. So they, you know, they see the real gaps in um, their ability to effectively provide services uh, because of lack of, of funding. Uh, but I think it's a great, uh, you didn't exactly make the suggestion, but I'll, I'll say you did make the suggestion that we could um, sort of formally talk about it at our next collaborative meeting or at an upcoming collaborative meeting and um, mm -hmm. and and make a, you know, some sort of official recommendation on that. Okay, thank you. Phyllis, then Brenda. I wanted to support with what Elizabeth said in terms of um, the need to um, have the Commission on Aging support the senior millage um, idea. Um, if if almost all the other counties in the state feel it is important to designate funds for services specifically uh, for older adults. I'm perplexed that Washtenaw County is not among those uh, counties providing this opportunity. Um, I do know that many of the services that are provided, the social services provided countywide may not be designated for older adults. So the information that Marta is so anxious to receive, I think it's very difficult to obtain because sometimes the funds will, will help the family in general. Well, a lot of families have multi-generations and older adults within, or they may provide something for another uh, person who is under 55 or 60 years of age. But, but that service also helps the, pers the uh, older adult community. Um, I'm also very concerned that the agencies that are trying very hard to provide services for older adults spend so much time and effort and money chasing funds for the very services that are needed, especially by low income people. So I um, I'm fairly new to politics, that's for sure, but I'm very frustrated that this keeps being pushed, kicked down the, the, the alley over and over again when the needs are so clear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phyllis. 
Brenda, then Bruce. I'm going to keep it short because I know we're running out of time. But um, as I said before, the only way that I would support this millage is if it's only providing services for seniors only. Um, I do not want this millage to be like a human service millage and they decide how much the seniors can have. So um, more clarity on the millage going towards seniors is what I would like to see. I do support it if it's for seniors only. Thank you. Uh, Bruce, then Elizabeth. Um, well, I think there's both an urgency and an opportunity right now. And I think we would, I would agree with some of the earlier comments that we need to go on record very strongly supporting the millage. But I would also say that it's very important that we can demonstrate why. Um, and I think that there could be a series of bulleted points, and I'm happy to work on this. I'm going to be at the millage meeting today at the Ypsilanti Senior Center, where they're going to be briefing with some of the public, and I'm on that subcommittee, but I would be happy to put together a one-page set of briefing points that makes this, this statement why this is urgent now and why the opportunity is is more appropriate right now. Um, and I, can, I won't go into details why I think that, I, but there's there's good reasons to be moving at this time. And um, and I just think we need to push. I just think we need to advocate. I think we need to, if we're gonna wait to have everything that they want and need in place, we're just gonna spend another 25 years and I won't be around in 25 years, but you guys will be, many of you will be sitting here wondering why the hell we haven't done anything since then. Um, and that's not to take away from the work that we've done. I think there's some tremendous work that we've done. I think we need to talk about why we can build on that. And the critical things are resources and staffing to keep this thing from being just a temporary concern uh, or and, and make it into a more ongoing thing that does benefit not just seniors, but it will primarily benefit seniors, but it'll benefit their families, their caregivers, and future generations. And if we can't make that case, then we as a council, as a, as a commission on aging, need to look at who else is gonna make that case. Right now, there isn't another body out there. There's other groups working on important things, but there's not another leading voice to make this case. And we need to make it now, and we need to make it next year, and we need to make it the year after. Because otherwise, they're just gonna keep pushing us off. I'll stop there. Thank you. Elizabeth and Dina. Bruce, I think that is a great idea to develop something that states the urgency and why. I think we need to not focus on only providing one set of comments or one set of documents because we do not know what the future holds. We don't know what the Board of Commissioners is going to do on Wednesday. We don't know if they're looking to put something on the ballot. We'll decide to put something on the ballot this year or say we're going to look at this again for 2026. Because there will be many opportunities for us to address the issue, I think it is wise to not wait and react until we have more information. We can keep gathering information, but every single presentation I have heard, and I've been in the commission since the beginning, is service providers saying, we do not have the resources to serve the people we have now. And we know that the population in Washtenaw County is aging. There will be more older people will be looking for services. And while I think it's very important to hold the county accountable, and I, that's why the idea of having an office on aging I think is useful. And while I think it's very important to be clear that this these are services we want targeted for seniors, because there has been past negative experiences, particularly with the public safety and mental health millage that was not targeted. I don't think we should let 
that stop us from making a recommendation now? We're not approving specific language. We're not approving uh, how the county office is going to be structured if they have one. What I would like to see the commission say is we support having a millage to increase funding to increase services to seniors in Washtenaw County. Thank you, Dina. Um, this is a bit of a you know outsider um, perspective because I'm not officially a, a commissioner and I don't get to vote, so I think I can maybe say uh, this a little bit more freely. But I think that this this group, the commission, has been talking for a while about um, the you know whether or not the commission on aging should recommend a millage and. Um, I don't I don't necessarily know all the processes that go in, you know, involved with, you know, how you might do that, but you know, is it possible that this group maybe needs to take a vote that do we want to make that recommendation and and that I, I if I understand correctly, is it not majority rules? It's not doesn't have to be unanimous for something to become an official resolution. I guess that's the first question before I go on. Correct. Okay. So um, I, I do think it's important to, to really separate out, you know, how you might feel individually and how you might vote individually on, on a millage versus, you know, is it the responsibility of this body to, to take that up as a recommendation for it just to simply go on the ballot? I mean, once it goes on the ballot, everybody, you know, has a chance to say, you know, whether or not they would support that. And, um, and I, it, it does seem as though if, if the commission on aging, you know, stalls in being able just to simply make that recommendation, there's, this seems to be a really big, like, miss for your role as a, as a commission. And I, I do hear that there's tons of information that is still unknown. Uh, and I and I don't disagree that many of that, you know, still needs to be to be known. But I think that that's a different it's a different act that needs to happen versus, you know, collectively saying, and again, you know, I assume you would vote as a group to decide if you want to collectively make this this recommendation. And if the majority wants to do that, I I think that you probably need to act much sooner than than you might all feel comfortable with, you know, because we won't have all of that information. But, you know, the the topic of whether or not the Commission on Aging should recommend a millage has been going on for years. Thank you. Marta? I would like to come up with something that I can support. That's what I want. I don't want to see the commission be split in a vote and have a majority rule. And some people feel like um, they don't have the correct amount of information. I would like to come to something that we can all support. I don't think it's a good image for the Commission on Aging to be split on whether or not there's a millage uh, to be put on the ballot. I don't disagree that there's a need for a millage. What I want is not to have the county rush in and put up a millage and not adequately have any idea of what they're going to actually do with the money. Conceptually, yes, there are service agencies in the county that are struggling, but how can we make sure that whatever millage is put out there addresses the needs of all the county, not just the most populated areas of the county? How can we make sure that senior centers are equitably funded. Uh, some of them right now are working with, you know, like chewing gum and tape and the other, some of the other ones are working with budgets. I mean, you know, there, there are definitely gaps. But what I want is something that's not just let's have a millage, but let's have a millage to accomplish A, B, C, D. That's what I want. And that's why I'm Thank you. to go forward. Yeah. Um, Phyllis and Bruce, I see your hands. We only have 20 minutes left to get through the rest of the agenda. Um, and so I think at this time, what I would like to do is share my screen um, with the document that I was reading off of earlier, get your feedback um, on 
no, we're, I, I would like to see these resolutions, recommendations be made today, um, but I want um, consensus on what is included. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna share this doc. Yeah. I'm gonna make this larger. Um, and maybe we also decide that these are two different uh, resolutions that we would like to make. One on the Office of Aging, because I really didn't hear any questions, comments, concerns about that one. So maybe we have that piece as one uh, resolution and then the millage as a second. Um, on the Office on Aging, is there any anything you disagree with in what is written here. I would only add a little bit to it, but I don't want to get into a detailed conversation now, but I, I'm generally very supportive of the Office for Aging. And I think all the things you have down there are on point. Um, I would add a role of being a voice for this generation and future generations in aging. That's the only thing I would add. Anyone else? Great. Um, Elizabeth. I'd like to make a motion that uh, the commission send a resolution to the Board of Commissioners that reads to ensure the needs of older adults are centered in the operation of Washington County, et cetera, through this office of voice for current and future aging persons will be funded by current by county funds. Do I have a second? I second. Taylor, you do the vote. Can can I? So oh yeah, discussion. I'm sorry, discussion. No. So um, this uh, office would um, be separate from the millage in terms of um, this, this would be funded by the county in and not necessarily with a millage. Is that correct? So we would be able to make that decision. Um, our recommendation is that it's funded by county funds. And so if they choose to move forward with the office on aging before there's a millage, it would have to come out of general fund dollars. Mm -hmm. um, if and when the millage happens, um, more than likely, I could see the county choosing to use those millage dollars to also fund this office. Okay. But as it's written right here, it's just broadly county funds. Bruce, I see your hand up and then Marta. Well, no, I, I can wait. I, 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 I'm, I know we're short time, so I just think we should move this. I, I can wait. Great. Marta? Could we just add, you know, I know that we've already got a motion on the floor, but a friendly amendment to suggest that this be implemented in the next uh, budget cycle, which begins, I believe, in October. I accept that friendly amendment. In the coming fiscal year. I'm not sure if I've got the date right, but I think that's the correct. It is. Yeah, they follow October to September. Any more discussion? Taylor, if you'll do the vote. Julia Ballard. Yes. 
Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Grass. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Which, by the way, where are you calling from? You came in late. She said it's still. Okay. She did? I'm sorry. Someone came in late. My bad. Bruce Estrada. Yes. Yes. Jennifer Heckendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Allison Foreman. Anna, Annie Summerville. Motion passes. Wonderful. All right, the second one is on the millage. Um, any discussion, Marta? I would like to propose removing the term, not only the office, because I don't want them to think that they don't have to do anything until they get a millage. So to support critical services needed in the county. Um, the other thing I have, on my mind is senior centers, and I don't see anything on the priority list um, uh, about senior centers in general. Health and wellness is only one portion of the services provided by senior centers. Um, yeah, um, I my comment on that is that every senior center is different. Oops, in how they do programming, there's some senior centers that you know have social workers. They do transportation and the whole bit and other ones are just providing some programming. Um, and so to not get in the weeds too much, transportation is, is one of the recommendations we have. Complex care management is one of the recommendations we have. And then in my experience with the senior centers in Washtenaw County, the rest of the programming that they offer is around health and wellness, isolation, um, those types of things. And so that's that's why it's explicitly listed here, um, but they could also fall under these other priorities. Maybe some sort of language that indicates leveling out services throughout the county. And I'm not really sure how to do that, but. Um... Um, yeah, I was thinking about that when you were sharing earlier that, that necessity for making sure we're really covering the rural area in addition to the urban area. Um, well, and it's a it's a fact that there are certain urban areas that are underserved, and you know, so it's not mm -hmm. entirely rural. So I'm thinking, um, you know, what if you do providing uh, service access to services equitably throughout the county, or something like that? I like that. I like that. The equity question is should be front and center. I mean, an equitable. Distribution is important. Maybe make number one bullet point equitable services through um, assuring that all county residents have equitable access to services for those. I like that. I also want to add that it's, I, I think we should add language that includes not just the folk, it's a heavy focus on services, which is understandable, but it's, it's, it's not, the only thing that we need to be advocating for here. And I, and I know that details are important, but we can get to that later. But I know the language is often services, uh, social services and supports. And supports can include, you know, structural supports such as, you know, senior centers, even though they do different things, but there are places and there are um, centers that are supportive um, more than just delivering services. So, Maybe say all services and supports. Services, supports, and structures that benefit, you know, something that benefit older adults, caregivers, and families. You know, I think that that's, you know, they'll, we can fill in the details of what we mean by that. But if we're going to lay out the kind of broad strokes here, then I think um, supports, I, I would say services, supports, and structures that um, benefit older adults, their families, caregivers, and caregivers. 
and again, a lot of this language was from the the previous many, many efforts that have gone on over the last 20 years. So it's not like breaking new ground. Um, Elizabeth. I was just saying, thinking if we read it as these services, supports and structures that benefit, or maybe we should put the language that benefit older adults and caregivers. Um, okay, maybe up here. Someplace else, yeah, up above. Yeah. Services. Supports and structures. Needed in the county. Residents to age or somewhere you put the benefit older adults and caregivers. Yes, I like that. And again, I know this is aspirational language, but I think it's more than aging in place. It's aging in healthy communities. And I think we can come that's back. That's why here. we had, that's what it says community. Do you think we need yeah, you can put it up above. That that gives a good general overview, doesn't it, Bruce? Yeah, it's important. I mean, I, there's a lot of helpful information that describes that, but it's it it takes the onus away from individuals having to do everything, and it puts it on the communities becoming better environments in which to age better. You know, and they're more ready for aging. There's a whole lot mm -hmm. of information that we could add. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, what I'm what I, I what I was proposing is on the equity thing is starting with the word uh, you know instead of ensuring assuring um, that all funding that that assuring that assuring equitable access to services throughout the county or something like that for older adults throughout the county. We don't have to repeat older adults in this section since it was what we led with. Um, just sharing equitable access to all. Is that what you had said, Marta? I'm just struggling. Um, I think you said all services. And how about saying services, supports, and structures again. How about equitable access throughout the county or something like that? Services and then throughout the county, yeah. And you don't need all when you're saying equitable. I mean, equitable is equitable. That That makes me feel better. I can take my hand down. Um, and then based on our discussion, I also added this last um, statement, um, just our desire to stay involved as the millage um, evolves. Um, I see Bruce and then Margie. Um, just a couple, just small edits, but on the complex care management, um, I think it's it's both complex care assessment and management. Um, in, in many cases, it's people just need to under first understand what they need, and then the delivery of those services, delivery and coordination. Um, that kind of language is helpful. Assessment, delivery, yeah. coordination. Um, I love 
that I just, um, I just, yeah, I know that when agencies get funding for something like complex care management, assessment is always included in that. But I think it's important as we pass this up to the county that they're also seeing that that's an important component of the service. So I like that. Did you have another edit, Bruce? Um, the only the only other thing would be, um, and I'm just if you could back up for one quick second to the just above this. Um, There, I think if we could in, insert, this is becoming very important as people are starting to look at what we need to be doing more extensively for older people, um, older adults. But there is an there is an onus on community readiness. It's not just on, and, and I know, and I, I know a lot of this stuff is encompassed in that. <clears throat> but I think if we at least put the language of readiness in there it, there it takes some of the 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 burden away from what seems like you know providers and families trying to figure out everything i think the idea that individual communities and the county as a whole needs to be you know ready for these changes and the growth um which i would argue is the office on aging yes Yes. Like they're they're part of that that piece. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that. We can come back to it. We have five minutes, and then I have to go. So, Margie. Uh, well, I was just gonna suggest that in complex care management, we we talk about older people, and I think we've used older adults consistently, uh, throughout. So just. Elizabeth? I um, would like, uh, I feel that sense of urgency to get a vote today. And I think people have added wonderful suggestions that really clarify um, the need to be equitable, focus on older adults, and uh, clarify um, importance of place-based services through senior centers. So I would like to submit a, a motion to approve this, but I don't want to cut somebody else off if they have something that they really, really want to include. I, I, just, I, I see Marta, if you don't mind me asking, what would you like to include? Can you scroll back up a little bit? I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about the, the wording that says, but not limited to. I don't know why you would include that kind of language. I think it's just habit. So including older adults in care. Yeah, okay, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. That's all. Are people okay if I make the motion to approve this resolution as displayed on our shared screen? Support. Any further discussion? Am I good to go roll? Mm -hmm. All right, Julia Ballard. Yes. Marga Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Yes. Elizabeth Thompson. Yes. Jennifer Green. Yes. Phyllis Herzig. Yes. Bruce Strain. Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn. Yes. Brenda McKinney. Yes, only if it goes, the millage goes toward uh, older adults only. Yes. Jasmine Cooper. Yes. Allison Foreman. Amy Somerville. Motion passes. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Um, I have two minutes and I have a hard stop. So jumping right into subcommittee updates, um, the moving forward future planning subcommittee, we talked about, um, so actually at our February meeting, we had a discussion about goals that we wanted to have as a commission this year. Um, I took 
our discussion and I made uh, just a goals and objective sheet that Taylor shared with you this morning. Um, the future planning committee discussed it during our last meeting and put their input into that. Um, we don't have time to discuss that today, but I would like to have a discussion on that um, next time we meet. If there's anything you feel that should be still included, um, any other ways that we can, you know, any other objectives that we can include under some of those goals, um, that is that document and the update from that group. And then potential millage, we just discussed that. Um, I am gonna step away now. So Brenda, if you wouldn't mind taking charge for the rest of this meeting, starting with the subcommittee updates, that would be so wonderful. Thank you. Okay, do we have a report from communications? No report from communication. Okay, I guess the only other report would be the town hall, right? That's right. Okay, well, uh, that would be me. And uh, Jennifer and I are working on the flyer. Um, and I've got some commitments from some commissioners. And I need to contact the mayor of Chelsea and another commissioner from the western part of the county. And that's, and we're moving and that's all I have to report. Uh, is there any new business from any member? No new business? Okay. I will say let's give it just a little bit. I did get an email from Commissioner Somerville saying that she could be just a little bit late and would be trying at 10 to come in. And it is now 10. Do you want to give her some time or no? No, I think it's, uh, if she isn't here by 10 o'clock, I don't think she's going to make it. All right. Um, is there any other new business? Okay. What is our, uh, the next agenda item is the next meeting date. Do you have that for us, uh, Taylor? April 5th. Just a question I had. Um, <clears throat> there were other subcommittees that met over the last month. Um, I don't know since this is my first month on the, on the commission, but I don't know how work from those committees gets reported out. I know Maria was taking, she was um, chairing both the subcommittee meetings that I was in and she takes very good notes and everything, but I don't know other than I'm not equipped to report out um, on behalf of those committees, but how does, how does that work? And how do we work on things if we're only doing things for an hour or two a month? Um, well, usually um, when the subcommittees, they meet and then someone reports. Now, which subcommittee are you on? I was on the millage one and I was on the um, sort of future directions committee, um, com subcommittee. And which, who leads the mill? I know Marie leads the millage in the future direction. Who uh, ch chairs that meeting? Well, she chaired both those meetings. Okay, usually what happens is that they're reported in uh, updates when we have our meetings. That's when they report updates. So if Marie wasn't here, then you would step in and give the report of your committee. Right. I mean, I could, I, I would have to go to my notes, but um, I guess my question is a, a little larger than that. Just is, is this the only way we work on things? <laughs> yes. No. Well, <laughs> as far as reports from committees, I've only gotten one from when I attend board meetings. What other way do you report? Well, Elizabeth, hey. pass her hand up. Um, maybe I can offer some perspective. Um, as far as report about potential millage and about the future planning, I heard Marie say that the report of the future planning is those list of goals that we were sent this morning and with the idea that then the whole commission takes a look at it and discusses that at the next meeting. And I would suspect Marie would say that the discussion about the resolution we passed 
was the work of the millage committee. Um, what happens is there is a lot of work outside um, this hour that the different committees do depending on what's coming up. For example, Brenda has, and I and uh, have talked frequently about uh, the town hall. She's asked for my input and then she gave the report. So it's kind of up to the committees how much work and how many meetings they do outside. Well, and my this, understanding, Elizabeth, is that he's asking, how do we give the reports? Is well, I think that the chair does. And it sounds like there, I'm wondering, I can't speak for Marie, but I'm wondering if she felt what she offered was the report. So you might want to discuss in the subcommittee. And just one other thing is we do have to be very careful because of the Open Meetings Act that we never have more than a certain number of commissioners participating in those subcommittee meetings because otherwise we're in violation of the Open Meetings Act. And is that was that, that helpful at all, Bruce? I, 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 yeah, yes, it's helpful to a degree. It it really doesn't answer the the fundamental question that I have. Well, we give the reports at the meetings monthly. I know, but but we reduce ourselves to <laughs> by choice. We reduce ourselves to very limited time to discuss or de debate or deliberate any of these issues. And I understand we draw on resources. I think Dina's folks do a lot of good work and other people do a lot of good work. But our work seems to get reduced to, you know, just quickly looking at things, quickly entering in a little bit of language, quickly making a decision. And these things probably require a little bit more opportunity to, for us as a group, to really discuss what we want. And, you know, if we're going to present, you know, things to the commissioners, because that's where we, you know, a lot of this stuff ends up, that's important. But we also have an obligation to present things to the public. And I think we just need to maybe rethink how we do our work, because, you know, just reducing it to reporting on subcommittees doing reporting reporting out subcommittee work um and even though the subcommittees work i mean we spent an hour in each of our subcommittees we did some good work but that was a bare minimum of what we should be doing i i just don't understand how we tackle more more complex issues find the time to really discuss them as a body and then report out not just you know through this once a month meeting um, but actually could, you know, and I know some of it goes on the website. I think, um, anyways, I'll stop there. I think there's just more we could do. You think we need more time for the committee reports? Is that what you're saying? I think we need more time for the committee to do its work and to report out. Well, the committees have their meetings outside of the regular board meetings. Right, but what is that for everybody that's like one hour a month it could be more how, tell me what tell me how well just, the, the chair of the committee talks about it i mean when we did a lot of work in year one to provide that first uh report of trends which pulled together a lot of other stuff um my particular subcommittee met every week for three or four months. You know, so it's really, that's it's where the work, in my experience, happens. Well, let me just offer a quick question for folks. And, and, I, and I, don't, I don't mean to be <laughs> difficult here, but I think, um, again, you sense my urgency. My, you know, you I think you realize my urgency here, but... It's urgent not because, I think it's urgent because we have opportunities to do more. We've done a lot of good work, as I've said, and we have opportunities to do more. How many of you have looked at the, the state plan for aging that just came out? There's a lot of good information there. There's a lot of good information in a lot of places. And I think, you know, the age ways does a lot of good work, both sort of bridging between the national and the, the state and the local. 
um, there's a lot of things out there that we could really use in our work. Um, I'm, and I know we don't have staffing that are directly assigned to us. I mean, we get the support of Taylor and we get the support of people like Dina, but it seems like we're just, you know, inching down the road here. And it just seems like we could do more. Well, what would you like to see? What changes would you like to see? Um, well, in general, I'd like to figure out how we could pull together the information that we currently have, number one. There's a lot of good information. There's a lot of good demographics. And Marta, Marta raises the questions about, you know, wanting to know more about what we've accomplished or what, what's been measured. And and I think that those are that's valid. But we have a lot of information that has gone through processes and that we could rely on more. Um, I, I I have, in just a little bit of time that I've been on the uh, commission and looking over things, there is a, I've got pages and pages and pages of useful information. I don't know how we can best get that into you know, helping us inform us in our work, but I'm willing to sort of think about that with everybody. Well, we would appreciate it if you can. Did you want, are you looking at forming another committee? Not necessarily. I think the futures committee can deal with that. I think the, commu the communications committee, I think the, the committees we have now could, could be part of that. Um, I'm not, I'm not looking to create yet another committee. I'm I'm just trying to understand how we can do our work better. Okay. Uh, Brenda, there are some hands raised. Would you I let, can, can you I see that? I can't see that on my end. Okay, I'm so using... I'm gonna jump in, Marta. Um, <clears throat> I think that the reason we formed the subcommittees in the first place was to give more time for the kind of discussion that you're suggesting for, Bruce. Um, recognizing that there's a lot of people on this Commission on Aging and that a smaller group can maybe focus more intensely on certain issues and spend more time and energy on those issues. The reports from the subcommittees are just a sort of progress report where they are, but the work of the subcommittees comes into the activities that we participate in in our formal meetings, like this morning when we, you know, basically spent most of the meeting working on a subject that was um, maybe prepared in foundational manner by the potential millage subcommittee. Um, and so I think that the kind of thoughtful discussion that you're thinking about probably takes place more at the subcommittee level, um, but feeds the discussion of the larger group when we when when it's kind of ripe, when it's ready for that to be brought to the entire group. Wow. So, you know, this time we focused on the work of the subcommittee on potential millage. Next time it looks like, or one of the future meetings, we're gonna focus on some of the work uh, coming out of the future planning subcommittee. Um, and then we also get reports from agencies and organizations within the county that are serving uh, seniors and aging adults. And sometimes those things drive the work of the subcommittee. So it kind of goes around and around. I don't know if that's a, if I'm doing a very good job of explaining, but I don't think that, I mean, I re, when we first formed the Commission on Aging, we were having two meetings a month and it was becoming a lot. And we found that it was really hard to have substantive discussions about specific topics with so many people, which is why we ended up going to the subcommittee um, approach. That's, I, I'm not sure I've been very clear, but that's kind of my thoughts on what you're suggesting or what you're bringing up. Taylor, I can't see hands up on my end. That's fine. I was going to just mention that we can also discuss that at the officers to try to start having, instead of always presentations or something, maybe having these bigger discussion items. If someone presents to the officers ideas that you would like to bring to the whole commission, maybe. And then Dina. 
I would just have a suggestion that it it may be worthwhile uh, for each committee to and I. I'm not involved in any of the committee, so I, I I'm I could be misspeaking in terms of what's already available, but for each committee to have some very tangible goals that they're working on that year and what they expect to accomplish by the end of the year, uh, I I did look at the CO um, COA goals. I know that that's not for the committees; that's the whole COA. But even those goals to me are very broad, and they are not um, time. Um, you know, they're, they don't associate with it, with a time period of when these things are, are going to happen. And, and the activities are, are also, you know, really broad. So I think that having some very specific goals, um, whether it's at the committee level, I mean, I think committee level and for the whole COA might, uh, might help, you know, with, with some of these, um, topics that are being raised, uh, also, I I do think that there may be some better ways to handle um, the kind of content presentations because um, I do think it takes up a lot of your time. And while it's all very valuable, maybe there's you know maybe that's something that the committees could uh, could could do like where small committee those those committees could actually meet um, with a, a content expert to get information rather than um, use the commission's time for that because it does seem like there's, um, it takes up a lot of your time and it doesn't leave as much time for the type of discussions that we're having today. And, and with that being said, Dina, a lot of the members on the different committees, they're like you said, they're very busy and it's hard to reach one another too. Um, so that could, you know, those are some things that we can discuss, like Taylor said, at our next um, officers meeting. And there could be some improvement, I'm sure. Margie? Um, yeah, I, um, well, first, uh, Bruce, I have a question. Um, you said you had reams and reams of notes. What what do you mean by that? A lot of my work over the years involves research, and I've been doing research on everything from what counties have been doing around the country. I've just been looking online to see if there's other people in other counties that are doing things we could learn from. I have a lot of information on healthy aging. I have a lot of information on aging readiness of communities. I have a lot of information on the the, the needs of older Americans. I just have a lot of information that I work with on a regular basis for, for my work in general. Um, okay. Well, that's what I have. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, I was thinking maybe you had notes from some of our previous presentations, but, but well, I, you, looked, I, I did look at those as well. Okay. The, you know, I think, I think it's fair to say, um, it's always a good idea to take a look at how you're doing work. So maybe that is something we should look at. And I think Dina's suggestion about um, having uh, goals for each subcommittee is a good idea. Um, so I'm not I'm not averse at all to taking a look at the, the way we do our work. Um, I think it's a good idea, and I think you should speak with. Marie about it or the officers as to some of your ideas. Um, um, I, I think it's worth noting that we spent quite a bit of time with presentations because we needed to educate ourselves and come to uh, be familiar with some of the issues in uh, the county. So that being said, we've already done that. Uh, those are available to any new member, um, but but I I think it does take up a, a lot of time, um, and I think we so maybe it's very timely that we take a look at how we do our work. Um, but I think you should maybe meet with the officers and talk more of that uh, through. And I welcome any suggestions, Bruce. Um, 
so if you would like, um, we could pro you could probably email um, the officers with any proposals you may have, and then they could bring you in with the officer meeting to discuss the future like process of being able to do that as well. And Elizabeth? I have been on many government commissions throughout my career, and they seem to be two different kinds. One, like, the uh, where I staffed the Governor's Commission on the Future of Higher Education in Michigan. Its goal was to produce a very long report that depended on research that made proposals for what would uh, be looked at in the next 20 years. And it was really informed by as much research as be out there. Other kinds of commissions, and I, I see this commission is much more targeted, um, not looking at all the issues, but into specific recommendations that we can make to the county board of commissioners about how to best serve um, the residents of Washtenaw County. So while some of these really global issues are important, I think that's where we have to really depend on cooperation with community partners. For example, the uh, Healthy Aging Collaborative did major work in pulling together about transportation and providing a transportation summit and giving some specific recommendations. And we know that the Ann Arbor Community Foundation is doing a study that incorporates all those years of needs assessments and other thing to provide some specific uh, recommendations about um, strategic planning for the future. And um, that will inform our discussions really significantly. Um, also, so, I think as we consider, because we're all both passionate people about serving older adults and very busy people because we're very passionate about that. So we have time limitations. I would just suggest we all think about really how we can target efforts to be the most effective um, given that we can't address everything and there um, are limitations about what even county government can impact. So it, it's always the balancing act about becoming informed about all the tremendous research that's out there and looking at very tangible recommendations for action items as we did today. Okay, Taylor, are there any more hands up? Bruce, you still have your hand up. Are you all set or do you have any other comments, questions, concerns? Um, just a final thought. Um, I appreciate that, Elizabeth. I, I, you know, I like you, I've done those kind of work, that kind of work for a long time. And I've prepared a lot of reports for a lot of groups. And um, I've worked both with policymakers and I've worked with community groups trying to influence policy. So I've sort of come at it from both ends. But my point is more the, I have, let me start with one question. Do we have any resources at all assigned to us? Okay. Okay. So that's a problem. <laughs> I don't expect us to get more resources, but for us to do our work, resources help. And the fact that people volunteer their time and put in however many hours a month they can put in is important. But it's so, it's like the house is on fire and we're trying to figure out subcommittees to figure out how to get out of the house. Um, and I think we need to do more. I mean, I, I've said this again and again in just the two times I've met with people. I think there's a sense of urgency, but a sense of opportunity. And I just think we're, if we do it at the pace we're doing, if we do it in the style that we're doing it, we're, we're not going to move um, towards 
any of the larger goals that have been around in Washtenaw County since at least 2001, as I've gone back and looked over the history. Um, and that includes looking at, you know, the presentations that were made to the board. I think those are to, to this group in, in last year. And I think Marta's summary of uh, uh, her, her um, progress report was very helpful. I think there's a number of things that are very helpful. We just, they just sort of pile up in places and we don't do as much with them as we could. Um, and I know it takes staffing, it takes people, it takes resources to do some of this stuff. But if we don't come up with an interim plan to try to get us some staffing and get an, an office of aging, we are, um, we're just not gonna get anywhere near where we need to and we're gonna miss opportunities. And let me just say one last thing. I mean, we have a governor right now who's very supportive of a lot of this. I think we could be doing a lot more. And I think we have people like Annie and others who could be a, a, more of a bridge. The fact that Washington County still doesn't have, you know, the kind of commitment that, the, you know, the rest of all but five counties in the rest of the state have seems kind of sad. Um, but I also think that there's opportunities at the federal level. I think there's opportunities in communities. I looked at the work that the five, the five towns did you know, in, in Western um, uh, um, Washtenaw County, there's there's some just very important work going on. And I think we as a body that is supposedly the, the lead body at the moment, governmental body, focusing on aging in Washtenaw County, we need to at least have some kind of brief, I don't think we have to get into a complicated thing, but a brief statement of purpose and, and um, plan for action. We don't okay. have to do it all right away and we don't have to, you know, we don't have to spell it out, but, and I think whatever the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation comes up with, and I think it'll be useful because they've done other good, good work. We can, uh, we can mention that we can play off of that. And, and I'm happy to take, you know, I'm happy to put work in on this. Um, so I'll stop. Well, like, like we said, Bruce, we will have a discussion at our officers meeting about your concern and we'll bring it back to the board next month. Can and, I just ask uh, what the officers meeting, what, what's the, who, who's on the officers meeting? I well, don't know. It's Marie, myself, and uh, Jennifer. Oh. And who else is there, Jennifer? Just me, because I coordinate it. And Taylor. Yeah. That's well, but we have in past had other commissioners come to the officer meeting to present something like what you're saying, like giving the ideas, the um, meet, like the, the ideas to do it, when we can do it. We have a schedule that we go through. Um, there's presentations that we're looking for and stuff like that. So we could factor in these types of discussions with the body as well, probably. And that's just that platform to be able to discuss those, to bring it to the whole commission. We we appreciate you bringing this to our attention too, Bruce. Um, and uh, we will discuss it at our officers' meeting. Is there any other business, new business? Okay. Um, our next meeting date is April fifth. Is that correct, Taylor? Yep. Is that's the last agenda item? Yep. Okay. Can we have a motion to adjourn? So move. And Herzig supports. Okay. Uh, motion. Is there support to yes. adjourn? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. See you later. Thanks. Oh, Hi, everybody. Can I just remind everybody about this this uh, town hall this afternoon at the Ipsy Senior Center? Um, to talk about uh, the senior millage and uh, yeah, Bruce just shared stuff. that with us earlier. Two to three thirty. Uh, is, is that going to be recorded? Do you know? I don't know. Um, well, I'm leaving town, but I really <laughs> yeah. If it's recorded, um, I can I can check with Monica. Oh, okay. Thank you. Is Monica still here? 
uh, I don't think she's on the call. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Becca? Oh, she is. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had not decided to record it, but I could make that happen. We can get that to happen. Okay. And it looks like we actually have Commissioner Somerville. So I'm going to actually promote you to panelist. I'm sorry. Say what? Commissioner Somerville did pop in. So I'm promoting her to a panelist. Okay. She had her hand raised. So she has to accept it. And thank you, Monica, for being here. When did they um, come on, Taylor? Who? Monica and um, Late. Annie. They were later. It was um, in our participant list that I could see. I didn't see Annie until way later, and I couldn't even see that her hand was raised. And um, since I have attempted, Annie, can you hear me? I have, uh, oh, she left. Oh, there you are. Then we can adjourn. Why? We can't adjourn because does Annie have a report? Annie? Mm. She's unmuted. All right. Well, we did have a motion and it did pass and she's not. Oh, she's connecting. It's connecting now. Annie? She's trying. Give her just a couple more minutes. Seconds. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Annie, oh. we, had, we had a motion to adjourn. Did oh, I know. I don't want to. I'm fine. I, I didn't know where we were at in the meeting. I had another. I had to be at another meeting in person. So did you have so, anything to report? Um, nope. Um, Ashley, let me know that there was a resolution passed. Um, so I'll make sure that the Board of Commissioners know. I didn't know about the town hall today, and I won't be able to go, um, unfortunately. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to hear how it went. Wonderful. Thanks okay, for we, we had a motion to adjourn, so the meeting is now ended. Have a great day, everybody. Mm -hmm.